Today we've come to Queen Mary's University London to speak to Professor Richard Ashcroft. Yep. Nice to meet you. Uh, if you could first just tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. My name's Richard Ashcroft and I'm Professor of Bioethics in the School of Law at Queen Mary, which is part of the University of London. What exactly is meant by the term bioethics? So bioethics is a relatively new uh, academic subject, um, basically uh, part of philosophy and law, and it's interested in ethical and social questions that arise in medicine and the life sciences, particularly around new technologies. Is there a particular area of bioethics that interests you more than another area, and if so, why? Yeah, I'm very interested in ethical problems in public health, um, the health of communities, and also in um, I'm very interested in emerging uh, neurotechnologies as well. Why do you think that neuroscience is such a hot topic at this point in time, and why is it important that we have the debate around it? There's a lot of scientific research going on into the brain and how it works now, and trying to link that to what we understand about human psychology. Uh, we're starting to see um, applications of neuroscience that are useful in medicine, um, both for diagnosis and treatment. And also we're living in a time where people are more and more aware of the way in which our behaviour is shaped by our physical nature. Uh, we're living in a time when people take very seriously the idea that our behaviour is partly controlled by our bodies and, and brains. What are the positive effects that understanding more about the brain can have on society? I think understanding it for its own sake is really positive because it is so interesting. Um, I've always held the view that doing science because it's interesting is really important and that's true of astronomy and neuroscience and genetics and anything really but in terms of practical things we can do um, lots of people have brain injuries car crashes motorcycle accidents and so on lots of people have brain damage because of things that go wrong when they're being born lots of people um, have psychological problems of one sort or another that we don't understand very well. Lots of people are um, affected by disorders that take hold as you get older, like dementia and Parkinson's disease. And the more we understand about what these conditions are and how they work and how they might respond to treatments of various sorts, be they drugs or stem cells or stimulating the brain with, with magnets or there are lots of things that you can try to do to mo modify how the brain works, um, the more prospect we have of being able to help people who are injured or disabled or ill in one way or another. And what do you think some of the challenges that understanding more about the brain will bring to us? Some of them are uh, a bit far-fetched maybe, but there's a lot of concern about if you can scan someone's brain, you'll be able to read what they're thinking. And so there are concerns about privacy and about uh, spying on people's minds, seeing what they're thinking, what could be more private than that. What are the scientific and social implications of understanding more about how our brains work? In terms of the social implications, I think one of them is that it's possible, at least, that people think more and more that we are just what goes on in our brains and that um, features of our personality and our culture and who we like and who we don't like and so on can all be explained by saying, oh, well, that's because your brain is a certain way. And there's a worry, I suppose, that we might just um, undermine notions of our own fundamental uniqueness, undermine notions about what's special about being human, undermine notions about personal responsibility. There's a worry that that could happen that we just gradually say, oh, it's his brain made him do it. It's not him. And that's what the play is very good at exploring, actually. Uh, why I like it so much.